Our first big proposition for you to think about is that inquiry is not an initiative. We never want to hear, oh, inquiry, we did that last year. Now we're doing something else. It's a way of professional being. So we want you to think about this work that you're doing as kind of the essence of who we are as teachers, as educators, and that it is really a way of thinking and a way of being as professionals. Every learner, whether they're a newcomer to, newcomer to your territory or whether they live in a family that doesn't have, whether they have a family, whether they have very little money, that every learner who comes to us at the beginning of the education process, uh, that they leave crossing that stage into adulthood with dignity, which means they've always been treated with respect. No racism, no, none of the isms, those are bad. That they have a genuine sense of purpose to help themselves and other people make a better world. We want every educator who works in a school, when they finally get their well-deserved retirement, to leave even more curious than when they started the profession. We have the least number of students struggling, and we have the most number of students at the high, highest levels in reading, which in our context is really important because we have um, poor early childhood programs and we have high childhood poverty, relatively speaking, for a you know, a developed place. So, so it's a teaching effect, and we think that that's, that's really important. Um, and we have the highest number of 25-year-olds that have at least two years of post-secondary, which is a proxy for long-term health outcomes as well as contribution to civic society. The difference for us with scanning is that we start by talking to young people. We don't start with organized uh, data sets, we start with talking to the person in front of us. Then, unlike the broad stage, there comes a time when you have to make a decision. And at the focus stage, we have to ask ourselves as a school or as a network, what's the one thing that if we focus on it, we're going to have the biggest impact? And these questions are so important to us that in the schools that we work with directly in our networks, we insist that they start with these questions. So here's the first one. We believe that in every young person needs to have two adults who believe they'll be a success in life. And those people need to be in the school. So we want to ask students in a variety of ways, if they can name two adults, and if they can, how is it that those adults demonstrate their, their belief that they will be successful? We want to know that each young person, whether they're five years old or 18 years old, can say in their own words what they're learning and why it's important. We want to ask them, how's it going? Do they have some criteria to assess themselves? And have they had the coaching feedback that lets them know what their next step is? So these are the starting questions for scanning. They're informed by the learning principles, and they generate the kind of curiosity that we want in teachers that propels them to want to know more and to learn more. We really want to develop the conditions for professional curiosity, and that requires us taking our time. So we say sometimes you need to slow down to pick up the pace of change and not just to hop from one thing to another, but to use the, this uh, framework as a way of building adult curiosity and building learner curiosity. But the other thing that we've learned is perseverance, that this work really takes time, and that there's going to be times when it gets a little bit difficult and it gets challenging. It sounds easy to describe the stages of the spiral, but once you get into it, it is much more complex than than it seems, and you need to be able to, to look to each other for support and to your facilitators to keep that work going. If everybody gets a little bit curious, the chance of system change is stronger mm -hmm. than if a few people get curious and then we go and stare at them for a while and say, ooh, you know, they're so unusual, we could never do that. Once we get people on that curiosity, mm -hmm. um, a uh, boat trip, we think you get a fleet. <laughs> Mandates um, have not worked for us. Voluntary <laughs> um, participation <laughs> and then thanking people. So 
So in, in our schools, they volunteer, and at the end of the year, we ask every school to share publicly what they've done, and we find some way of thanking them for their, their work. It may be a small grant, it may be uh, some addi additional professional learning or resources, but saying thank you, having it voluntary. And then a key for us has been leadership development at the same time. Part of it is using everyday language that a child can use, a parent can use, mm -hmm. a trustee can use, a mayor can use. I'm sure your mayor, this would make sense to her. If you can use the same language, there's a power to that, and it creates an energy, and I think that does give you coherence over time.